have you. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing tonight? All right. We have absolutely got an amazing show for you tonight. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. All right, here we go. You know, no matter what you're eating, no matter how good it is, it can always be a little better, right? With pork fat. I mean, pork fat is the answer to all of the questions like, how can I boost up my beans? Pork fat. How can I zip up my soups? Pork fat. How can I get my husband to take out the trash? Pork fat. Speaking about a couple of crazy guys, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Everlast Man. Pork fat tonight. Pork fat. Yeah. yeah. So that's why tonight I'm here to remind you that always pork fat rules on Emerald Live. I've been waiting for the night for a long time. Get all the pork fat out of my system in one shot here. You want to know what's on the menu tonight? Good. I'll show you. Check it out. Oh, yeah. This is real fancy stuff here. First dish that we're going to do, it's kind of a craze right now going on, especially in the old restaurant scene. We're going to take a pork belly and we're gonna show you how to cook that with a tangerine glaze. It's really fantastic. Then, we'll take a little trout filet, we're gonna wrap it in bacon and cook it. I'm gonna show you how to make this really kicked up thyme butter sauce. And some southern style green beans that we're gonna cook with a little pancetta, pork fat. <laughs> and wait till you see this dish, a little inspiration from my restaurant, Nola. These root beer glazed pork chops. Oh, yeah, babe. Let me tell you. Let's get started on this, uh, on this pork belly. We, uh, it's really, really interesting. Before I go there, let me just quickly get a little glaze on here. In a saucepan, real quick, I want to take the juice of some tangerines that I squeezed, and I want to get a couple of cups of that. want to try to eliminate any seeds or any pulp. Perfect. All right, two cups of that. Wow, you mean he measured something? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with him? <laughs> so now we're going to take that and sweeten it with a little sugar. And folks, basically what this is going to do now is we're going to start bringing this up to a boil. We're going to make a little tangerine glaze that we're gonna glaze this pork belly with. So you say, pork belly, what is that? I told you, it's this new hot thing right now, especially in the restaurant scene. This is pork belly right here. So it's basically, if you will, it's kind of like bacon that hasn't been cured, okay? That's basically what it is. It's that right from the, from the belly there that comes, kind of goes around. Well, we'll show you that later on, but it's bacon that's not been cured or smoked or any of that. It's just fresh. Now, what we're gonna do is we cut it up in some pieces. This will give you a better shot at what that is. Hi. <laughs> okay, so that's the best way to describe it. Now, what we're gonna do is we wanna score this on the, on the hard side down here. And uh, once we score that, just a little bit. We don't want to go all the way through. We're just, this is the hard part of the skin, if you will. 
So we're just making a little score in this here, which is going to penetrate the flavors. Are you with me so far? All right, so we're going to score the hard part. So if this was salted on the top of this, right, that would be salt pork, okay? And that would be bacon. So now we got it in pieces. Fantastic. Change our board. Little mirepoix on the bottom. Carrot, celery, and onions. Going to season it with a little salt. <laughs> Some fresh ground pepper. Then we're going to take our pork bellies and season them. Yeah. They're not seasoned. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is this. The scored side, we're going to leave up top. We're going to place it on the vegetables. Now I have my oven as high as it can go. It's like on broil. If you have a modern oven, you have broil. <laughs> if you have an old oven, you're on about 500 degrees or so. <laughs> wishing that you had broil. <laughs> so what we're going to do is this. We're going to blast this in this 500 degree or broil oven for about 15 minutes, just so that we can start high heat, start getting that, some color, some cooking on the top. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip them over and do the same thing. 15 minutes on the other side. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what they look like. Stick around, we'll be right back. Thank you. Before, pork fat always rules, especially tonight. All right, speaking about pork fat ruling. So I want to make sure everybody's, uh, we haven't lost anybody down on uh, 9th Avenue here. Um, so we scored it and we did that in the Meripois, right? 15 minutes broil, right? Or the highest your oven can go. 15 minutes we turned them over. Back in another 15 minutes on broil. That's where we are right now. Okay? So... Once you get the 15 minute and the 15 minute thing going, the next thing I'm gonna do now while I'm here is I wanna turn the oven basically now to 300 degrees. Then I'm gonna take this out and add a little more love to this. Oh yeah, you see that right now? That's just somewhat loved. <laughs> the real love is coming. Now, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. We got that little color going like that, you see? Oh. Now, here's what we do. We take a little brown sugar. Oh, stop playing with my emotions, please. We take some clove, some allspice, and some thyme, and we're going to put that in here. Then the rest... The rest of that tangerine juice that we had, we're pouring that in here. Oh, wait, you, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. All right, now, 300 degrees the oven's on. We now want to cover this. And then what you're going to do, 300 degrees, two hours we're going to cook it. Two hours. Then, after two hours, oh yeah, this is gonna be some good belly. <laughs> after two hours, then what we're gonna do is that we sort of vent it back, which means after two hours, we're gonna take some of the foil and peel it back a little bit to expose some of the open heat 
for another two hours. Are you with me? There is a quiz coming. You sure you're with me? All right. After that two hours, <laughs> see, I'm going to show you what this venting back means now. This is the venting back. You see that? So it's exposed. That's so that, that's so that the steam can get released so it's not going to like boil. There's some dry heat still there. Now watch how this looks now. So after, oh yeah, baby. So after, now, after this, let me show you how we're going to finish it. Next step that we do is we go back. See, we had 300, two hours, 300, two hours. Now we want to crank it back up to broil. See, I have a new oven. It's going to broil right here. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, now take the belly out, and we're going to set it on this pan right here. See, this is about ready to just fall apart. Oh, yeah. Now. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> you remember that tangerine glaze that we made? Well, tangerine glaze is about ready to step up to the plate. What we're going to do is now that we got all the belly out of this, it's time to finish the love. Now, I don't throw any of this stuff out. That's some good stuff there. But here's what we do. That tangerine glaze that we made earlier, okay, here's what we do now. We take the tangerine glaze... And we're going to just brush it. See, it's reduced like a syrup. We're just going to brush this tangerine glaze like this. Oh, you should see how happy this is right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tangerine glaze and pork fat. I mean, come on. Give me a break. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh, yes, indeed. Oh, yes, indeedy. All right. Now, just the last, just to get that glaze, you see, we got the oven real hot. We're going to put this back in here. 15 more minutes, and it's going to be ready. Now, one of my favorite vegetables, because it's a pork fat thing, <laughs> is, uh, is doing these sort of stewed green beans. So what I do is I take a little pancetta, which is Italian bacon, or you could use regular bacon, and I render this down. When it renders that down, it gets crispy, that would be. Then the next thing I do is I add a lot of chopped onions to this. Salt, pepper, okay? When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Island. Come on. Welcome back, everybody. Emerald Lagasse here. Happy, happy. All right, now, I got the uh, pancetta and the onions now. First thing we want to do is add a little layer of seasoning in there. So I got a little salt, a <laughs> little pepper. Oh, a lot of pepper. <laughs> See, the onions are just happy right now. This is really, really simple. Now, if the potatoes were big, I'd cut them in half, but they look pretty, pretty medium, small size. So here's how it goes. The green beans go in here.
The potatoes go in here. And then some uh, H2O. The water level should just like cover them. No, I don't blanch them. Just put them in, wash them, clean them, take the ends off. And basically now, we let them go. Now, they come up to a boil. What we want to do is then turn the heat down to like medium low. Just let them kind of get simmer for like an hour, okay? Now, traditionally, if you eat this pork belly dish, not only here, as I told you that it was hot, but classically where it comes from in France, you always get served a little green salad with this thing. It's, it's sort of tradition. They, they believe that a little green salad will, will cut some of the fat. I don't know, I don't make up this stuff. <laughs> I'm just delivering the news. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is this. I got some lemon juice in here, and I want to add a little, a little honey for a little sweetness. And then I'm going to add a little, uh, you could use sherry vinegar, I have champagne vinegar, whatever vinegar you like, red wine vinegar would work, a little Dijon mustard. Now, I want to make a quick little vinaigrette. So, so I get some good olive oil now. We're gonna whisk that mustard in, which is really gonna be the emulsifier. And slowly we're gonna drizzle in this olive oil. You do it too fast, it's gonna break. So we're making just a little simple, classic little vinaigrette here. Mm -hmm. Generally with a classic vinaigrette, or at least my vinaigrettes, when they're not emulsified like this, it's usually three to one. Three oil to one pot vinegar generally gives you the perfect vinaigrette. Now, you gotta taste it. Now, if you don't wanna taste it, you wanna use your family as guinea pigs, go right ahead. <laughs> Little salt. <laughs> Pepper. Now, we have that. Also, they do Sometimes a lot of unusual greens, like dandelion, uh, greens that are kind of bitter. So um, whatever, you got to season them too, because they don't come seasoned. So a little salt and pepper. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, it's been about 15 minutes. Woo! Woo! Look at this. Oh, can you imagine? Oh. So, how I would serve this is a little vinaigrette like this, right on your salad. Lightly toss it. Just really lightly toss it. What did it do to you? So I just get a little bit of this. And then uh, what I do is, depending on the portion of pork belly that you want, one piece, two pieces, <laughs> three pieces, then right at the end, I just take back that little tangerine glaze that we did. Okay? Oh, yeah, babe. This is a We're just going to put a little bit of that, like that. And uh, that's, uh, that's what it is, folks. It's just a roasted pork belly like that that's absolutely delicious. <laughs> Serve with a little green salad like that. Little bitterness. I'm happy. I'm really happy. Pork fat makes me happy. When we come back, you know how happy we're going to be? Another night! <laughs>
in the live band, folks. Yeah. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Emeril Lagasse, and pork fat rules tonight here on Emerald Live, I'll tell you that. Unfortunately, we only had so much belly to go around, but uh, what do you think? Great. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. I mean, you, would, you didn't expect that, did you? Re- Not at really? Because I think the folks at home are like thinking right now that I have gone off <laughs> such in another planet that. Uh, it's a good planet to be it's on. It's a good yeah. planet, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, a good planet. it's a good planet. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I was really impressed, you know, you see, because, uh, you know, you can't have like a great cooking show without a great cooking team. And we got a young lady in the kitchen, one of our chefs back there, Nikki, who uh, really was in charge of sort of overseeing this dish. Hey, did you see the. Nick, how you doing? Yeah, it looks great. Did you taste it? I'm going to right now. Okay. It came out really tender. You did a great job. Delicious, huh? It's amazing. Thanks for all your help. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. Those, uh, those green beans, they're going to go through sort of a rough passage before they're going to get really tender and yummy. Because um, they start out to be kind of okay, and then they're going to get tender. Believe me, they're going to get tender. Just let that love keep going in there. You can always add more pork fat, right? (laughs) Speaking about that, I got some beautiful trout, which is um, just a nice fish. You know, it's mild and delicious, and you can pretty much get them fresh pretty much everywhere. Down in New Orleans... We have a speckled trout season. Um, So here's what I do, a very simple dish. I take the trout after I rinse them really good. And um, inside the stomach, basically, I just put a few sprigs of thyme, which is going to give it a very unique flavor. And then I take a couple of three, four slices of lemon and put that inside there as well. It just really gives it a nice little flavor. Now, I take good smoky bacon. You can get all kinds of different bacon. I take good smoky bacon now and I sort of wrap bacon around it. Now, if you can get it around like that, perfect. If not, I'm going to show you a little trick here in a second. So, we'll just wrap the trout. If you want more, you could certainly use more. Now, if you can't tuck it under real good, Then the bacon, as it starts cooking, it's going to come undone. So what I do is I basically use these little toothpicks here to just kind of keep the bacon from kind of folding up and buckling, if you will. So as you can see here, what I did with the picks, see I had them right like that? Same thing here. I just kind of pick the bacon right through. Same thing here and here. Now, we've got to season them up. So what I do now is I take a little olive oil, just a little drizzle like that. Of course, the trout has been washed, super washed, re-washed, power washed, <laughs> and it's clean. Now, you could just simply do a little salt and pepper Or, or if you want, I mean, that would be just very mildly spiced right there. Or what you could do is just kick it up with a little essence like that, okay? Now, what you want to do is you want to put your oven again on broil. Or as high as it's going to go. Maybe I should have just called this the broiling show. (laughs) Come on, look at all the guilty faces out there. When's the last time you used your broiler? Right? Show of hands, anybody? Okay, that's about a 2%. (laughs) Don't worry. We're going to do more broiling. All right, so I've got it completely on broil. We're going to put these trout in there. The thing is, is that the high heat, it's going to start immediately cooking the bacon. It's going to start immediately cooking that trout like that. Now, since I got it stuffed with thyme and a little lemon, 
I thought it would be appropriate to show you just a very simple thyme butter sauce. And here's how you do that. In a little saucepan, very simple, we're going to take a little thyme, the juice of uh, half a lemon or a whole lemon, thyme, shallots, or shallots. <laughs> now, we just kind of let the heat get a little bit like that. And then basically, we're just going to add maybe about a half a cup or so of wine. <laughs> and... Get asked a lot on that www.foodnetwork.com about cooking wines. You know, because I guess years ago, there were actually some cooking wines. I don't know. I never used them. I just tell people this. I, don't, I, I only cook with wine that I would drink. So it doesn't have to be expensive, just as long as it, uh, it tastes good. We're going to let this reduce down now, folks, okay? And the... Uh, the Evaporation of the wine, the shallots, the lemon juice is going to happen. The concentration of flavor is going to just kind of go down and get even more concentrated. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to make that into a thyme butter sauce with our roasted bacon trout. Stick around. We'll be right back. Rock it. So uh, it's pork fat. Yeah. All right, once we get this fairly evaporated here, this white wine, shallot, little lemon juice, and thyme, now what we're going to do is uh, sort of take the thyme leaves out. Now, if you don't want to, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Now we're going to make this into a beurre blanc or a butter sauce. Beurre blancs, they were like really, really popular for a while there. I'm not going to say when. 70s. <laughs> now, once that gets evaporated, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of ground white pepper and more clean thyme leaves. Then we're going to add a little bit of whipping cream. And for me, I got to have a little hot sauce in here just to kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of get that. Now, basically, folks, I mean, that's what it is. It's a butter sauce. And so you should use unsalted <laughs> butter because salted butter, you're going to get that, uh, that salt flavor. You want to be able to add your own salt. Once this reduces down, pieces of unsalted butter, and you start whisking it in. Now, let me tell you this. This is when you should turn the heat down because you don't want to break the sauce. Once the butter's incorporated, that's it. Take it off or turn off the heat. Keep it just in a warm spot. So you add as much butter as you like. That's a good start. Now, you can flavor this other ways that you want, too. I mean, you could add tomato to this. You could add mushrooms. There's a lot of things that you could add. So I'm whisking this in here now. And I'm about ready to finish this dish. All right, I'm going to turn the heat off. Now, while that's staying warm, we're going to check the green beans. They happen to be perfect because I checked them on the break. But if you want, taste them. Does it need more salt? Do you want to add some more pepper, et cetera, et cetera? Because now at this point, basically, we're ready for the trout. The trout 
is happy, get a shot of this. Don't be sticking any more toothpicks in there. You can basically just know. Oh, yeah, babe, 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 babe. <laughs> now, doesn't that look great? Oh, yeah. So I basically go for them smothered green beans in the pancetta and the potatoes right on the bottom here. Oh, yeah. A couple of potatoes. See, it's a one-stop shopping kind of thing, you know what I mean? You got your starch and your veg all in one pot. So now that we've got that, then what I like to do is just take one of those beautiful, beautiful trout, go underneath it. Go underneath this side as well. Then what I do is I take one of those beautiful trout, sort of right on there. Want to take the toothpicks out, unless you want to leave them in and, you know, as a little surprise. <laughs> oh, sorry, honey. I thought you were going to eat and floss all at one time. <laughs> then... Take that wonderful little butter sauce and you give it a little shot like that. Yeah, you don't have to use a lot of it, okay? And then I like to just uh, take, especially this time of the year, nice tomatoes, a little salt, just a tiny bit of olive oil like this. They're happy, toss them. Oh, they're giggling. <laughs> and then you can just add a little bit of the tomato on top like that, folks. Oh yeah, babe, a little green onion like that. Huh? There you have it, okay? A little trout. A little trout. Oh, yeah. Bam! Just like that. Oh. All right. I happen to uh, like a couple of root beers. Boggs I like. I, I love this, uh, this Abita root beer. I take a couple of cups of root beer and a couple of cups of veal stock. Turn the heat on. And we're going to let this reduce to make this delicious glaze right now, a little root beer glaze. Now, at the restaurant, when we serve pork chops, we serve pork chops. I mean, we don't serve no wimpy chops. We serve pork chops. So I happen to get a couple of them from the butcher. And... I mean, that's a pork chop, you know what I mean? I mean, it's very, very simple. You can get them thin ones, and what, you're gonna eat six or eight of them? Why fool around? Just go for the gusto, you know? So what I do is uh, I get a little oil and season one side of them. Salt, pepper, the essence works fine. Oh, baby. You see the market down there? Yeah. yeah. You won't find any more pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to start putting those right on here. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to season... Uh, you may want to put the new fancy, uh... Oh, yeah, look. Well, you can't see this at home, but... See all of those things up there, folks? Those are, uh, just in case we use the grill. Okay, now... I'm gonna season both sides, and we want to score these. We're not gonna finish cooking these completely on the grill right now. We're just... We're scoring them, you see? We're just... We're gonna just... Look, we're just scoring them like this, you see? We're scoring them. And we're gonna score them. Now, what I'm doing here, I uh, take sweet potatoes, rub them with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper, bake them in the oven for about 50 minutes till they got nice and soft and happy. That's what this is right here now. When they come out, you let them cool for a few minutes and the skin 
just peels right off like that. You see? Oh, yeah, babe. Well, let me tell you. So you just peel these babies off like this. Then what we're going to do with the peeled potatoes, we're going to just put them in the mixer, sort of mash them a little bit with a little brown sugar, a little molasses, a little bit of milk or cream, and uh, a little, uh, a little help. So, see, we got them scored now, okay? We're gonna score this side right here. We're gonna put them on a sheet pan. We're gonna bake them in the oven till the internal temperature is about 140. When we come back, the root beer glaze. Stick around, we'll be right back. Back in. If you're just joining us, shame on you. Pork fat is ruling tonight. We uh, sort of mocked, beautiful mocked the pork chops, those really, really skinny, thin things that we had. And uh, we have them in the oven. We're going to get there in a second, tell you about that. Served up the trout, had a few extra green beans, don't want to waste them. Our uh, root beer glaze, kind of turning into a syrup right now. Look at this. See, it's reduced. Look at that. It's got that very intense root beer flavor. Love that, love that, love that. <laughs> Something else I love, onions. Took a few of them, sliced them, little butter, and you just sort of slowly cook them. And what happens is they get caramelized like this. You can't do it too fast, you know? It's a food of love thing. Medium low, just keep stirring them like this, but they get so sweet. Oh, yeah. Speaking about sweet, the sweet potatoes. Now, if you let them cool too long and you're having a problem with the skin, peeling them off, because it should be pretty easy that they come off. But if you're having trouble with them, you can just take a paring knife and um, that would be this. <laughs> and then you could just sort of peel them like that and there's no problem. See? Okay. Skin. Skinless. You want to be able to touch them anyhow, but they should be still warm enough that you don't have to. The good thing about this, you can make them way in advance, put them in a casserole. When you're ready, you can just bake them in the oven. So now we've got that in there. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to just sort of, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, man. Wow. Whoa. Spun out of control. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. See, that's when you got to hold it like that, Doc. <laughs> hey, you know, it happens. <laughs> you know? You know why? Because we really cook on this show. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> we do. Brown sugar goes in there. Oh, a little bit of that molasses. Now... If you want a little butter, you can use a little butter, a little cream. Then, all right, we'll just call it even. Just a little butter. <laughs> and a little salt. All right, now we got the uh, potatoes. Oh, some bourbon in here, too. <laughs> now you get that all incorporated like that. Basically, we're like ready to rumble. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, beautiful. All right, so that's done. <laughs> Taking that off. Basically now, we'll get our platter, that leftover beans and potatoes that we had, right? We'll just put a few of those left over. Why waste it, right? So we got that just kind of in the middle, getting happy right now. And then... Now what we'll do is this. We'll uh, go and get those awesome sweet potatoes, or better known as bourbon 
mashed sweet potatoes and we'll put a little of that there a little there like that a little over here and then what we'll do when you're ready to do this oh beautiful you just go and get those incredible hello <laughs> see you check them with a little thermometer 140 you let them rest like this for about five minutes because if you cut into it right now shh, all the juices just go like that so after five minutes what you do is you go now and get that root beer syrup you see and you just kind of just put that root beer syrup well let me show you again instant replay this is you get that well you just get a little bit of that you get a little bit of that syrup okay it's a pork fat thing oh wait and the last thing just take a little bit of that onion marmalade right on there oh yeah and a little bam hey i'm emma lagasse i want to thank you for joining me tonight see you next time everybody